Let me also make another correlation to you about what I mean by the physical world and the logical equivalent. One of the things that I've always thought about is the correlation of an analyst and a software developer to a architect and a builder. Let's make that correlation. Let's just say for argument's sake that you were going to build a brand new house and that you bought a piece of land and you were going to design the house of your dreams. Well, you and perhaps your spouse would go and find what we would call an architect. Now, the question becomes, what does an architect do? And the first thing perhaps that they would say to you is, what do you want? And you and your spouse, or you alone, whatever it might be, would probably say, I want a very large house. I want the house to be pretty. I want it to uh, tutor. I want the rooms to be large. I want the sun to come in in a certain way. I want a spiral staircase. I want uh, a catty-combed room. Um, all of these various things, and what I'm asking you to think about right now is what world are you talking in? When you go in and you are describing the house that you want, you are completely engulfed in the physical world. What is the architect trying to accomplish while you're talking? He, he or she is probably moving around trying to figure out what you really mean and ultimately will give you what? Well, let's not jump, as I, as I sense is in your mind, to a blueprint yet because I don't really think that, that people who build homes uh, that are going to be the people who live in them can really make a decision on the house without seeing something more important, which is what I call a picture. So the architect would probably give you a picture of the house, which in effect is doing what? Well, to some extent, he is providing you with a prototype. Now let me define prototype so everyone is with me here. A prototype is something that looks like the real thing but doesn't work. Picture getting in an automobile at the automobile show and the car would be there, the steering wheel is there, but if you turn the ignition, there's no engine. So what you're trying to provide to the user is an understanding of what it's going to look like. So in the best of circumstances, an architect would give you a drawing or a picture of what the house is going to look like. Now, stay with me here because it's very important, this correlation that I'm building. The first time you get a picture of the house, I guess there is some slight chance that you might be in love with it, but there's more a reality, a higher correlation, that you would, be, you would want to make some changes. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that this process becomes iterative. Until at some point, you and the architect agree to agree. Now comes the interesting transformation. The architect, who is displaying some user abilities in this communication that's be going on and on over a period of time, at this point now has to take care of some of the tools in order to do the ultimate translation to the logical equivalent. The logical equivalent in this case would be the output of what we would know as a blueprint. Now, if you've ever seen a blueprint, they all kind of look the same. They're all done to a standard. They're pictures. They're not a lot of words. They're not prose. They're not a story about the house. It's an architectural drawing. It takes technical training and education to know how to do it. So what has happened, if you stay with me on this, what started out as a conversation to have a big house, to have a large entrance, a descriptive process in the physical world, the architect, by going through a series of translations with you and giving you a prototype, ultimately creates a technical diagram that is absolutely logical. And what I mean by logical, most important, is that it has to be very, very specific, or in other words, 
It cannot be ambiguous. It is not ambiguous, which means ultimately that if someone gets it, they cannot look at this drawing and misperceive what it means or miscomprehend what it means. In fact, who does this blueprint ultimately go to? A builder. Now, when the builder gets the blueprint, if they were to say, I don't understand it, what would the architect say? Well, ultimately, the architect most likely would say, this person is not a builder. In fact, there's an expectation that a builder understands how to read that blueprint. In fact, the house will be built from the blueprint. It will not be built from the picture. And while there are other things that will go into the color of the house, uh, perhaps where we buy the materials, the materials must be purchased to the specifics of what was put into the blueprint itself. Another interesting concept. Does the builder talk to the architect? Well, my guess is yes, but I don't think they talk all that much. And the reason they don't talk all that much is because the blueprint is so non-ambiguous that there is little need to have those conversations. Unless, of course, the house has not been designed well, and as a result, there's been some errors. Now, let's look at what has happened here. You came in and wanted a house in the physical world. You were descriptive. You went to see a person called an architect who analyzed your needs. It was an iterative process. You agreed to agree. You then went away with a picture of your house. The architect created a technical document called a blueprint, which is not ambiguous, gave it to a builder who had to know how to read it, had some minimal conversation back and forth, and then built the house. Perhaps you get a copy of the blueprint, but do you really or are you really capable of understanding it? I think not. 